Greetings viewers, NYC Resistance. If you live in the New York City area, you probably know by now how hard it is to get gas. You gotta wait online for anywhere from two to four hours just to get a few gallons of regular low grade gasoline. And when you reach the cashier, you're not even guaranteed to get any. So at all the gas pumps throughout New York City, you have the good, sweet NYPD in there keeping order and making sure everything goes smooth. So, you know, I'm at, at this Queens pump on Metropolitan, and I noticed that this, this cop was just lingering around. You know, I, I mean, actually, when I, when I first got here, I, I overheard him talking to somebody, and it, and it made me get real suspicious. But let me, let me kind of narrate what's going on here. See, that black car just pulled in, and you see the cop, you know, talking to the motorist. And a couple seconds later, the car pulled, you know, reverses back out, make a, makes a U-turn, and parks across the street. And I just showed you how the line looks on the other side of the block. It stretches back as far as the eye can see. You know, I waited maybe two, two to three hours, you know, just to get some um, low-grade gas that is making my, making my car cackle. And so you see that cop right there, he, he's... He's pretty much set up shop on pump number one under the guise of keeping order at the gas station. You know, that guy just just pulled up, had a brief conversation with him, and he's now parked across the street waiting. You know, and, you know, let's let's use our common sense. We we know what he's waiting for. He's waiting to be called over. He's waiting to be called over. To, to jump the line and not have to wait like all the sheep on the other side. So you're gonna see the cop use his flashlight to signal him to come over and pull into pump number one, bypassing the, the three hour wait on the other side of the block. Nobody's the wiser. You see, we all, we all trust the NYPD and our public officials and anybody in a suit or a uniform to do the right thing, but this is how, it's, this is how it really is. You know, you gotta sit in your car for hours waiting to get gas. But, you know, if you got enough money or you know the right people, you don't gotta wait. In your car, you know, every now and then to stay warm, and then you're not even guaranteed if you're gonna get gas, and then you might not even make it home. And that's gonna be somebody's reality tonight. Because little do they know, on the, on, on the other end, you have the NYPD that are, are supposed to be there to keep order, you know, making side deals with people from Pennsylvania now. See, this Pennsylvania plate. Making side deals with them to, to skip the line and get gas. You know, these cops are making money off of this crisis. They ain't doing this out the good, goodness of their heart. That's a Connecticut plate. Got a Pennsylvania plate across the street. And, and, and people that live here in New York City can't get gas. See? It's calling somebody else in. You see that white truck, white truck across the street? That's, this is a totally separate line from the line that everybody else has to wait in. You lined up at the Pathmark or the Costco's or, or, or the BJ's, wherever you buy food from, they'll have you lined up like sheep on one end and then around the corner, they're filling up their trunks with all the chicken and steak and rice and vegetables and fruit and everything like that. And by the time you get inside the store, You'll be lucky if you get a can of beans. That's how it's gonna be. You you watch. When your good peace prize winning Barack Obama, when he declares war and goes goes to war with Iran and they close the Strait of Hormuz, and then like right now, what you're seeing is artificial gas scarcity. This is all a beta test. Gas is not really this scarce. If they want, if they wanted every single gas station to have gas, they would all have gas. But they're testing us. How much? How much will we deal with? How much will we put up with? Will we really follow these ridiculous rules? Will we really have uh, uh, comply with gas rationing where if your plate has an even number, you can get gas on this day. If your gas has, if your car has a license plate has a odd number, you'll get gas on another day. Will you really go along with that? And it turns out that people will go along with anything. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Monday, 
November 12th, 2012, and I'm Darko. I'm going to just continue here talking about uh, what's going on in uh, post-Hurricane Sandy in New Jersey, New York area, because they pretty much just forgot about them and left them there. So, man hit by cop car billed for damage. I've covered this before. It's an older story, but it's back in the news, and it follows um, quite nicely the the story that I just covered, a man who suffered leg and wrist injuries after being hit by a police car while crossing the street in New York City was astounded to receive a bill for almost $1,000 to cover the cost of repairs to the car. Yeah, so the guy says that the bill was retribution for the lawsuit. That's what he believes. And we were covering uh, last week about how these FEMA camps reports are coming out that uh, they're starting to look really like FEMA camps, like concentration camps. Um, description of situation inside a FEMA camp. From, this is from Reuters. November 12th, inside the giant billowy white tents, massive uh, lights glare down from the ceiling all night long. The air is loud with the buzz of generators pumping out power. The post-storm housing and refugee camp on the grounds of the Monmouth Park racetrack is in lockdown with security guards at every door, including the showers. I wonder if they have cameras in the showers like schools now. No one is allowed to go anywhere without showing their IDs. Even to, you know, let's see your papers, right? Even to use the bathroom, you have to show your your badge it says here uh whose rental was washed away new jersey the mini city has no cigarettes no books no magazines no board games no tvs and no newspapers or radios and on friday night in front of the mess hall which was serving fried chicken out of the box just add water potatoes a child was dancing and dancing to nothing we're starting to lose it said to camp but we have nowhere else to go it says power workers from out of state who are helping utilities restore electricity to the area we're starting to bed down in tent city says some empty vodka bottles appeared on the muddy street. And I was actually wondering, are these the union workers or are these the volunteers that were turned away? says there are now far more men than women or children, and the women said it was impossible not to notice the leering of some men. I've heard about the rapists out there, too. So, um, and, you know, out there they're big anti-gun people, so kind of sucks. Can't defend yourself, especially if you're in those camps. If they're being run the way they're being described, there's no freaking way they're going to allow people to, to carry firearms and defend themselves. But then again, those type of people probably wouldn't be in those stupid-ass camps to begin with, right? Camp FEMA update says, we feel like we're in a concentration camp. It says, though details are scarce and the media coverage has been completely restricted by officials, um, the stories of what victims of the Hurricane Sandy are experiencing at the hands of FEMA um, have begun to emerge. So they're calling these things tent cities. And I uh, remember the borough president of Staten Island, along with residents, have some choice words to describe how FEMA and the Red Cross have completely failed at their jobs. Via the Daily Sheeple made an announcement that they were sending us to permanent structures up here that had just been redone. They had washing machines and hot showers, steady electric, and then they sent us to Tent City. We got effed. Says uh, the information blackout is one reason. Outside of the tightly guarded community on Friday, word was spreading that the Department of Human Services would aim to remove uh, residents to the racetrack clubhouse on Saturday. So it goes on and it says that, but inside Tent City, which has room for thousands, but was only sheltering a couple hundred on Friday, no one had heard anything about a move or anything else. They treated us like we are prisoners, said Ashley Sable, 21, of New Jersey. It's bad to say, but we honestly feel like we're in concentration camps. New York officials are reportedly considering closed prisons for displaced Sandy victims. They're now uh, eyeing a recently closed prison as a temporary housing uh, structure for people displaced by Superstorm Sandy as this week's blah, 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 right? Um, just remember, uh, you know, I've talked about uh, Walmarts being used as FEMA camps. It's been used in the media. I think, like I mentioned before, the Jericho show, they, they talk about it, you know, that's, that they were horrible, those FEMA camps, and that uh, they set them up in Walmart parking lots, some of them. But uh, military installations could be used uh, for them as well, along with now prison, uh, old prisons and stuff. And it's interesting. It says here, um, oh, one of the victims, quote, victims, weather modded victims, it's empty. They may as well use it. And he says, at least uh, they have the right facilities. You can't keep them uh, in schools. The kids got to go to school, right? They got to go get their brainwashing, the re-education camps. Um, to teach them how to be good slaves, to be good prisoners, right? It's like I mentioned before, you know, most of us are living in our own little prison cells, you know, voluntarily. So, I mean, this wouldn't be a big deal for people to just go into prison cells and live in an emergency situation. Workers pay same tax rate as the rich. So despite common misconception that the wealthy Americans pay more taxes 
average low-income workers in the United States actually pay about the same percentage in taxes as the very rich, uh, says the founder of the U.S. Against Greed in Chicago. An average low-income person in the U.S. pays just about the same percentage as the very rich uh, person. Actually, when we get up into the multimillionaires, the billionaires, their tax rates come down because they're paying much less in taxes because of capital gains. He added that uh, corporations who are supposed to be paying 35% taxes are only paying 10%. study from October revealed that the income share of the top 1% grew rapidly after 1980 from 10% in 81 to 23% in 2007, an increase of 135 percentage points. Then we have the distribution of economic pain from the financial crisis in one chart. So they blame it on policy and tax decisions, i.e. not taxing them and taxing the uh, lower income, but also financial bubbles are often wealth transfer mechanisms. And links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Go in there and check out those charts. Next up, Obama says the wealthy must pay more in taxes, but he wants to extend tax cuts for everyone else. And this is what this whole fiscal tax cliff that they're talking about this is what it's about. It's about, uh, it's like two or three different tax cuts that are expiring. So this is all the results of government. It would have been putting on, it's postponing the inevitable, right? So that's what they want to do now. They just want to postpone the inevitable again with more debt, most likely. And cute little war games that Republicans can play along with Democrats. Um, but basically what it is is that they're going to tax, um, or they're going to let uh, people that are millionaires that create most of the jobs, they're going to let those tax cuts expire. And then the same uh, a-holes, the billionaires and stuff like that, they got really rich recently and over the last 30 years, they're going to continue to not pay as much tax. So pretty interesting. Obama wins eight of the nation's 10 wealthiest counties. So he won the elite, you know, he's an elitist and he got voted in by an elite, by elitist. So, so it kind of, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Went to, went to poor before, the liberal, uh, the uh, redistribution of wealth person, Barack Obama, um, instead of the multimillionaire, Mitt Romney. Well, he is going to redistribute wealth. He's, like I said, he's going to take it from the people that produce a lot of jobs and businesses, uh, the millionaires, and they're going to take that along with the middle class, and they're going to give it to the poor, and, of course, um, the rich, the super rich, are going get, to get by here. And it does create class warfare. And the people that voted him in, it's crazy because they're the ones that are going to get thrown under the bus by him, right? Because the people that are way up at the top, the billionaires, multi-billionaires, do they really vote? No, because they understand it doesn't mean shit. It's about how much money you put, uh, you put into the elections. So it says that the 29-hour work week coming as employers seek to escape the Obama uh, mandate. It says businesses with 50 or more employees who average at least 30 hours a week will be subject to Obamacare insurance coverage mandate. So companies are reportedly planning large layoffs due to the implementation of Obamacare's, but some are potentially avoiding this uh, requirement by limiting employees' weekly hours to less than 30 hours defined by Obamacare as full-time. So they, their stores have already been doing this to avoid some of these things by giving you 39 hours instead of 40 hours. Companies plan massive layoffs as Obamacare becomes reality, so they're also planning layoffs as there's a woman fired for anti-Obama posts. She wouldn't be the first. I'm not racist, but Denise Helms did muse about getting him assassinated. So the California woman says she's not a racist, but a Facebook post about Obama that included a racial slur and a musing that maybe he will get uh, assassinated this term. Which triggered a Secret Service investigation. And it says here that... Um, it prompted her employer to fire her. So after a barrage of angry phone calls and emotionally charged Facebook messages run by the CIA, but she fired back on Facebook saying, I'm not a race, racist and I'm not crazy, just simply stating my opinion. Well, you don't do that in America anymore, Denise. Didn't you know that? You didn't get that memo, did you? So yeah, see, the employee is no longer with the company, they said. We were as shocked as you by our outrageous and completely unacceptable comments. So... CNN article bashes the growing number of people that question mass media. This is where we'll uh, continue in the second part, uh, basically, what I was caught talking about the uh, silencing uh, dissenters and stuff like that, especially in the media, which hunts of journalists under the Obama regime. It says in the past years or so, we've seen several mass media outlets reporting on the popularity of conspiracy theories, alternative news. It says, however, in every case, the resulting article is not objective. It says it's an all-out hit piece, so we'll return with this in part two. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.